Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to continue on. We're in lab number six. Now we're in exercise number two where we're going to add a preferences page. Uh, the first portion of this lesson will be identical to what we did previously with the about page. The only change we're going to make is that we're going to add in the user control, we're going to add a toggle switch which will allow the user to determine whether they want to enable or disable the, uh, the, uh, the ability of the app to remember the last page that the user was on before the app was terminated. Okay, So let's go ahead and just continue on and we're going to go to that on commands requested method that we created previously and we're just going to add an additional option here which is the preferences panel. So let's go ahead and copy that and then open up our app.xaml.cs and then go to the on commands requested event handler and so this will get executed whenever the user calls up the uh, the settings charm and so when they call up the settings charm we want to add another menu option preferences and so then we're going to on the fly create a settings flyout control and then add in a preferences user control just like we did with the about page so here we're going to right click our project select add new item and we're going to create a new user control called preferences user control dot xaml click add all right and it sees it now so we're good there and then on this side what we're going to do is we're going to add our toggle control in the empty grid. So that's the next portion of this where we add our toggle switch. And we're going to paste it in. Now this toggle switch looks great on a black background, but notice that all of its uh, text and its controls are, are white and light gray. So when we run the app, you might not get the experience that you hope for. Uh, now it really depends. They may have updated the, uh, the hands-on lab uh, after I've recorded this video. So you might see different code, but I'm just going to point it out to you anyway. If, uh, if you see what I see, now we see the preferences in the menu, which is awesome, and then I'm going to click the preferences, but then you get to this panel, the flyout, uh, and there's nothing there. Well, actually, it is there. You just can't see it because it's all in white. Microsoft provides guidelines for settings panels. The header should be a color chosen by the user or the app. The settings area below should be white. Unfortunately, a white background will clash with the foreground color of most controls. So we'll either have to change the foreground color, which would be the correct choice if we're submitting this to the Windows Store, or we're going to need to change the background color of the settings area below, which is a simple fix and the one I'm going to choose to perform for this exercise. Again, by doing this, I'll be ignoring Microsoft's guidance. Let me show you where that guidance is located. And here's the guidelines for app settings. And if you scroll all the way down here into the um, styling, the settings for flyouts, it says display the setting contents on a white background. So I'm going to avoid that for now. And instead, what I'm going to do is change this property from background to content background brush and set that equal to green or that greenish color that we defined here at the very top for our background color. Okay, so let's run it again and we'll see the difference now. Again, I'm just doing this for convenience sake. I would put more time into this and style up the control rather than the background, but I'm trying to do this quickly and efficiently here. Uh, so here again, preferences, we click preferences and now we get that same color background, all right. And so now I can switch the toggle on and off, really neat. But it doesn't really do anything yet, so let's go ahead and continue on with, uh, an, uh, with the remainder of the exercise here. All right, and so now we want to make the preference sticky. So the first thing that it wants us to do is to add an event called the toggled event and when on toggled is clicked then we're going to save the setting whatever this remember toggle switch is set to in something called application current roaming settings uh, and then the dictionary 
uh, key of remember will be set to this value, okay? And so we need a few new concepts here. Um, first of all, we we'll want to save that preference in a feature called roaming settings. Roaming settings allows us, the programmers, to save app data in the cloud uh, as associated with a given user's account so that when they log into Windows 8, all of their settings will also be retrieved from the cloud, all right? So in our case, we're merely going to be saving a, a name value pair in a special container that's called roaming settings. But as the lab indicates, we could also save the settings locally to local settings. Now obviously roaming settings would be our preference so that the setting can be stored in the cloud for the given user and say if you're using the same app for multiple devices like a home tablet, a home desktop, a work desktop, and so on, by adding roaming settings, all of your settings would follow you across all those devices. But what if you want to save more than just this simple name value pair like we're doing here in this example? Here we're just setting the value remember equal to whatever the toggle switch value is uh, in step number three. What if you needed to save lots of data? Well, in that case, you can create a, uh, a data file and then save that data file into one of three different special folders in Windows 8. Either the local folder, which would only then obviously hold that setting or those values on one machine, the roaming folder, which would allow you to sync that setting or that data file up in the cloud, uh, or a temporary folder. So the one folder in particular, that roaming folder, will take our files and sync them up in the cloud for a given user. Just to reinforce this idea, I'm going to perform a little experiment that will tell me exactly how much storage space my app can use for any settings or data or configuration files I may want to save using roaming settings. So to perform this little experiment here in our app, let's just go down here and we'll just call windows.storage dot application data dot current dot roaming uh, storage quota we'd be able to get that value so let's just do var my value equals and then do that and I'm going to set a breakpoint on this and then I'm going to run the app and we're going to bring up the settings Okay, and here we, before it populates the settings, we're, we're in our um, on commands requested. And here I'm going to hover my mouse cursor over the roaming storage quota. And actually, let's go ahead and execute this line of code and see what value is. So the value is set to 100. That's 100K available in the cloud for this app. So can't store a ton of data here unless you ask for additional space, uh, but 100K seems to be uh, the default for the roaming storage uh, that you can save. So let's go ahead and just comment that out. All right, so let's continue on with the exercise here um, and go ahead and actually implement this. So we need to make some changes to the toggle switch. Instead of just making the edits, I'm going to just copy the entire change and then blow away the existing toggle switch with the change. And we'll go into the preferences user control and we'll add this uh, on toggled event handler. And I did things a little bit out of out of order so that we can exercise this using so that we can see our how to add that using statement automatically without having to copy it. Okay. I'll see what else we need to do here. And then add the following statements to the preferences user control constructor after the call to initialize component. And so this is where we're actually pulling the value from the roaming settings and then setting our, our toggle switch to that value. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that. So we put that there. Okay, great. 
So then what it asks us to do is run the application, change the preference, restart the application, and then go to preferences and confirm that the toggle switch is on. So this is just making it sticky. We haven't really done anything of value with this setting yet, just to make sure that the setting gets saved in the first place. So let's go ahead and uh, do as they ask us to do here. All right, and so here we go to settings, preferences. I'm gonna turn that on and we'll dismiss the panel. And then we're gonna go and stop the app. And then we're gonna run the app one more time. We'll go to a different page, I don't know, that doesn't really. Go to preferences and it remembered uh, the value of the setting so we have made it sticky awesome okay so we're storing the setting however the setting uh, isn't really doing anything meaningful just yet and we'll fix that in the next lesson we'll see you there thank you mm -hmm.